So I'd like to open up the meeting and uh, I have one adjustment to the agenda which is to add a, a town highway report um, that Chuck will give us. Um, anything else? Anybody have anything to add to the agenda? I've got nothing. Okay. I do not either. All right. Okay. Any public comment at all? All right. Uh, hearing none. Um, do I hear a motion to approve the bills to the town? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then do I hear a motion to approve the minutes um, from the de December 13th, 2021 select board meeting? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, good. So, Robin, we're ready for a town clerk's report. Well, I've been, um, most of, for the last two weeks, I've been pretty much reporting. It's still coming in uh, on a regular basis. And um, getting stuff ready for the town report. And one of the things that Diane, Diana reminded me this morning is anybody that's got a local business, there's a directory on the last page of the town report. So you can have your information, name, telephone numbers put there. Mm -hmm. And we also had Moose Perry come into the office today. He has a camp up on East Long Pond. And he says the homesteaders are parking in the road up there. Mm -hmm. Randy called Greg and he said that they've already ticketed them once. They have, yeah. So. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, and I, I got a call from one of those homesteaders and about the ticket. I actually saw him today and um, just, um, I, of course, I didn't know that they were parking in the road, but um, they have moved the vehicle out of the turnaround for the town truck, which is, I think, what the road crew was concerned about. Apparently, they're having trouble with their battery. They have to jump the truck. And, um, but, so I don't know what will, you know, as far as parking on the road, um, obviously, there are people that live in there um, on, on the upper side of East Long. So, um, yeah, I'm not, I guess maybe we'll ask the road crew to check it out. Because Moose was saying today that it would be difficult to get through there even with a snow machine. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, so we'll probably either, maybe that's the job for our town constable. I'm not sure. Um, check it out. I don't, I don't have any way that when the person called, they didn't give me a phone number. And I don't know how to get a hold of them to let them know that there's been another complaint. Yeah. Um, but. Mm -hmm. oh. We have an email, but they don't always. Yeah, they do have that little website. Internet. Yeah, that would be one way to try to contact them. Yeah, That's a good idea. Yeah, we could try that. Okay. Anything else, Robin? No, no? other than the letter that I got. Right. Brought to you tonight. Yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, okay. In the maybe in the town highway report. Anybody have any questions for Robin at all? Is it good? Okay. Um, so I guess we'll move on to the town treasury report. That was coming with the new town. So the last two weeks for payroll, it was ten thousand six hundred ninety-eight dollars and thirty-one cents. AP was six thousand nine hundred fifty-one dollars and eighty-seven cents. Cash receipts income was $100. Delin delinquency taxes was $1,289.35. And today I transferred uh, 10,000 from the mar money market to put into the checking. Um, things I've been working on. Um, definitely the budget. Um, we are on revised number five uh, for the general funds and four for the highway. Um, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any questions at all for Brandy? Yes, Monty. Brandy, I think we asked, someone asked us to, of you last meeting, but um, is there any, how much of a pain is it to get a list of billing taxes? It's not at all. Okay, so I can stop right Yeah, absolutely. And it gives you like, how many years of each one? Yep. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Brandy? Okay, so Chuck, um, if you'd like, um, 
we could give us a little bit of a town highway report and the sound is pretty low so we'll all have to listen close Actually, we could talk about it right now if you want. But, uh, so this letter, let, let me just explain to the folks here. Chuck, this letter is uh, from the Hardwick. Um, Hardwick has a new town manager, and he's looking over the numbers. And you know, we have a mutual um, agreement with uh, the town of Hardwick, uh, the highway department. They plow the roads um, up in West Woodbury for us in the winter time, and a short bit of road. Um, uh, going into Nichols Pond and he's just crunching the numbers and and then what we do in return is we spend a week um, helping them haul their winter sand um, so he he had their road foreman go over um, how much they figure that they're spending to to plow the roads up in West Woodbury I think he came up with around eight thousand dollars, and it, he's, he's just thinking that they're doing more on their side than we're giving on ours. So it sounds like we'll be talking about that uh, mutual agreement sometime in the near future. Um, he, uh, the town, I can't remember his name, the new town manager, but David Upson. David Upson. David Upson. He'll be re uh, probably meeting with us in, a, in our next select board meeting in January. Any thoughts on that, Chuck? Yeah, well, I like you brought up, brought to his attention that this year we didn't haul sand for him. That we ended up resurfacing a road and we put 14 load of our gravel onto one of the roads and resurfaced it for him. Okay. Because they didn't have time to haul sand when we had time. Yeah. So there's 14 loads of gravel out there and the, the manpower of three days of putting that in place. Okay, well, I guess we should probably come up with some figures to share with the town manager just for for that and maybe a rough estimate of what, um, you know, what a week's worth of hauling gravel would be, um, just so we uh, have a... One truck for three days, but... Yeah. Uh, I can do that. Okay. And I think usually it's a, a week's worth of um, winter, winter sand hauling with two trucks. Um, it's, it's supposed to be close to that. He's got it down here that uh, the truck is only $520. Well, I'll tell you what, if you're going to work your truck for $520 for a week, two of them, I'm going to hire you all. Yeah, I'll hire you two of them. I need it now. Yeah. yeah. I'll take it for two weeks. Yeah, that sounds like he's using low figures uh, when he's figuring out what we're doing. But I have the state um, VTRANS rates for trucks and check that out. Um, let's see, I have one other question for you while you're here. I got a call um, a few weeks ago from um, Nick Meyer, um, and he was wondering. Um, if the town would be willing to plow the Nichols Pond Road up to the turnaround to the road that goes down to the dam. And I told them that, that um, you know, usually the town doesn't plow class four roads for people who, you know, live on them. Um, and I told them that if we were to do that, that, uh, you know, other people would be wanting us to do the same. I also mentioned that uh, Hardwick actually plows that road um, for us. That's part of the, win the winter agreement that we have with them. Um, so I just wanted, I wanted to let you know that. And um, he also mentioned maybe uh, seeing if the town would be able to do any work on that road in the, in the summer. Um, 
Um, so I, t I told him that you know we would get back to him about that and that maybe this would be a conversation that he could have with the select board in, in the spring. Um, but I, I didn't really, I told him I was pretty doubtful that um, Hardwick would want to continue plowing up to, to the turnaround to the dam. Um, but I just thought I'd share that with you because I don't think I have. No, no, I, this is the first I've heard about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I really think that's a bad policy to get into. But. Yeah, that's been the general select board <coughs> feeling is that uh, if you do it for one person, then um, mm -hmm. anyone else who requests has a legitimate reason for asking. So. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. And what do you think it's worth on the, the road up to the Nichols Dam turn? Yeah. Yeah. It is a road that gets used quite a bit in the summertime, people going down to the pond. Um, so, I mean, we'll, we can talk about that in the spring. Right. Well, yeah. I feel that it should be worked on up there, son. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I'll let him know that. Okay. Yeah. Um, anybody have any questions at all for our road commissioner? Well, at least... Oh, okay. Um, okay, so um, next on the agenda is to uh, review the general and town highway budgets. So I want to pull those out. Um, Russell and Rita, do you want to get a chair and sit down? There's a chair right by Skip there that looks like it might work. No, he's going to stand up, I guess. Okay. So, Brandy, how do you want to just quickly start with a general one and go through it, or what, what would you prefer? I have two extra copies. Um, or do you want us just to point out things that, that we're... the bottom line that we finally came up with? For the general fund? Yeah. The bottom line, the increase is going to be 280,597.44. So if you go to page 7 at the end of the general fund and it says negative, when I put that up until page, well, it's actually page one, but it's the second page after your balance sheet, I will put that in its spot, and that's an even. That's a, it'll wash out the negative. So we're going up another 40,000. Uh -huh. So I, ha I had some questions about some of the line items in the final budget. Yep. Um, let's see. Um, For one, we're, you know, if we're going to have um, a town-wide vote on um, a professional audit, and mm -hmm. if we're going to um, be having a town-wide vote on um, the change in the Woodbury Cemetery Fund, how would that be reflected? It's, no. There, won't, there will be articles on the warning. They will not be in the budget. They we will have to the add the budget, add it into the budget if they are approved, and then we will... Um, well then, how how do we vote if we're doing everything by Australian ballot this year? Which we we're probably going to have to put them in the budget. How if we that has that figure that has to be reflected in the budget. It doesn't though. The, last year we did the. Remember, you're going to have to decide this if you go to Australian ballot. But we combined all the uh, nonprofits into one vote to make it easier and put some things like cemetery and library. They're all the, always the same year after year mm -hmm. into the budget, but it doesn't have to be that way. That there can still be separate articles. We're not voting. You won't be voting on a tax rate. In order to oh. get a tax rate, you'll have to after all the voting and things are approved, then somebody can figure out the tax rate. But it's not going to be something you can figure out until the voting is finished. Okay. But that's right. okay. Cause I guess we can do it that way, yeah. So there okay. wouldn't be a general budget figure, a I total. Mean, we can 
So hypothetically, what I did yeah. last year, mm -hmm. I put in all the calculations for all the appropriations. Mm -hmm. We got a total without the revenue included. Mm -hmm. And then when I print out this to put it in the town report, I pull out everything that's on the warning. Okay, great. Okay. Because if it's in here and it's on the warning and they're both approved, mm -hmm. technically they can come after me for double. Oh, yeah. Okay. That being said, I pull them out to put them in the town report. Okay. So I can get you a number without the revenue where we, we estimate without receiving the revenue. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then um, when it comes time setting the tax rate, okay. we can whittle it down from there. All right. Okay. Just, I just wanted to make sure that it would work out with the, with the one that we just worked it. So say it for the highway. If you go to page seven, underneath where that negative yep. 280,000 is. Yep. To the highway budget. It okay. says zero right now. So if you go to page 13, it is, hmm. highway is negative 454,944. I don't have a page 13. You don't have a page, sir. It's the very end of it. No, no, you're looking six at the wrong six. one. Six. The ones you're looking at are the budgets that eight, I eight just redid. Oh. Paul, you're you're looking at the wrong one, too. Oh, I might. Okay. Well, I had the right numbers. Yeah. Those are just the, the highlighted green are the adjustments I made to the general, uh, the, the general fund and the highway last week. Now and then today's financials is well, both of them combined. Eight, 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 eight. Okay. okay. All right. So where it's last year it was four hundred and forty-eight thousand. Uh, this year it's four hundred and fifty-four thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's see. I think. Did I have them here in the general budget? Um, so I guess my questions were what I just asked about the, the different than um, the cemetery fund and the uh, mm -hmm. professional audit. Um, I was wondering, um, the, the heat for the town hall, I wonder if we could, I mean, it's just $500, but um, I wonder if we could drop that down either to $500, so to make a change of 1,000, or actually drop it down to just 1,000 to be a little bit more conservative. We really don't use it much during the heating season, um, and the last two years it hasn't come really anywhere near the $1,500 that we budget. So maybe not 500 or 1,000 off the the general budget for the heat for the town hall. That's the only thought I had on the general budget. So I don't. What do you guys think of that? It's it's are peanuts, we really. Or are we doing a thousand? Well, that's what I'm. That's what I'm asking. I'm. I'm not you saying. You might have to be using it more. Oh, it's sorry. potentially we're going to be. Potentially we're going to use it more often. Uh huh. Yeah. Is there any special? Well, then maybe maybe we should just leave it the way it is. Then. I'd rather leave it. Okay. Personally. All right. I'll take the opinion of anybody else who wants to offer it. I'm fine with that. I'm, I'm afraid that it's going to go up, mm -hmm. not down. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let's keep it right where it is. Then. Does that sound okay? No. Okay. Okay. So let's. That's pretty much it on the general budget, I think. Uh, should we look at the highway budget next? Can you just ask a quick question? Sure. On page eleven, the complete eleven. Outside services. Yep. What is that and what happened? Uh, we were, it was a discussion to have somebody haul our sanding or gravel so it makes it easier so our road crew can actually work on cleaning up the sides of the yeah. roads or... So that's that's the big bulk of that cost for this, this fiscal year. Yeah. Okay. Is that we did have some help hauling gravel. Well, thank you, Monty. Okay. Thank you for the Okay, so... Um, 
bicycle. So I had a question. Um, this is on, well, let me look at the other. I, I was using the one that I had from earlier this week to write on. Uh, well, anyway, it's on. Oh. Let me let me get so I can actually find that. Can I ask Chuck a question? Number. Sure. Chuck. Do you, do you think there's going to be sand left over? And I say that because we didn't we didn't spend any money on sand this year, and for budgeting next year we budgeted twenty five thousand. But I didn't know if yeah. That was the only one in the, the highway that I think we might be able to save on. But Boy. I know, I know, it's in the rain. Yeah, they used a lot of sand this weekend. This weekend. <coughs> okay. So hypothetically, when it gets closer to December, or December, when it gets closer to um, July, when we set the tax rate. Yeah, we certainly can look at it before. Yeah. You know, it merges April and see what's going on, but I really right. yeah. yeah. So um, I have a question about, uh, it's on page nine of the new form. For the overtime, um, road crew, the amount. You said nine? I was thinking that we could drop it down to 10,000. Obviously, it, you, it, we have no idea what's going to happen this winter, but two winters ago, when they were pretty busy, it came to about $9,000, $8,500. And then last year, it was less than $3,000. I don't know, I'm just wondering if we could drop that down to from 15000 to 10000 Plus, we only have, seems like we're only going to have two full-time road crew members this, this winter. So, um, and we're budgeting for another full for another full next year. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, well, that, yeah. So that was a thought that I had. Um, the other thought I had was um, with the liability coverage, that's down a few line items in the same section. Um, two years ago it came to just under $7,000 um, and it looks like it's pretty much coming will be close to that at the halfway point. It's it's down from the uh, overtime. It's in that same section. Oh, okay. Um, so liability coverage. Half. Highway. I mean, we could get it down to seven. That's That was my thought. Maybe we could drop that down to seven. And liability coverage. But again, that's based on but yeah. yeah. And that was the only, the only. I guess I did have one other. Now I've got to find out which page it is on the new one. Uh, but it's under highway equipment, um, small tools. Uh, let's see, where are you? Here you are. Small tools. Um, Maybe drop again. This is peanuts, but dropping it down from fifteen hundred to a thousand. And Chuck, if you have any opinions on this, feel free to voice them. Okay. And then the equipment rental. I kind of had a question mark there too, um, because that used to be just for the mower that we no longer have to rent. We did put a thousand dollars in. Were we thinking that we might be renting something next summer? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, the the yeah the pounder. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. I remember now. So, Chuck. Yeah. I sent an email to Shauna Clifford. Um, yeah. And there is a grant coming out in January for paving and sealing. Really? So I was talking to Greg about getting the estimation of how much road to patch for Foster, Cabot Road, and then there's skirtings on Town Farm Road, Cabot Road. Foster? Wasn't it Foster? Foster, Foster Hill. Foster for the skirting. Mm -hmm. 
We need to go back to East Hill too for when we're doing the skirt. Yes. That ain't real cool. So applying for that grant, um, and then just well, so that my theory is to take that, it out of the paving. Yeah, the paving. If we're going to go for a paving grant, that only um, the only roads that class that qualify for that are class two roads. Okay. And the only class two roads that we have in Woodbury are Cabot Road and Foster Hill. Foster Hill. So, so any the of other those skirtings can be the other skirtings would come be all, all out of the town's pocket for okay. those. So we can pay additional while they're doing it. Just yeah. add it on, and that has to be deducted yeah, from the if, grant. If we have if we have enough in the paving grant to cover it. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'm not so interested in the town paying for a lot of paving now. The right. Skirts and stuff. Okay. The holes need to be patched, but that mess they got down in town across from the town clerk's office, they should be held accountable for that bump going on to 14. And right. Yeah, it's a pretty good bump. Get there and fix that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's 18,000 in the paving fund. Okay. Yeah, that won't go very too no, far. Go well, too we far. are just doing the patching. Well, the pat the yeah, the patching, um, if it is on those two, if, you know, if it's on Foster Hill Road or Cattle Road, that are two sections of paved road, we, we can go for the grant with that. Right. We need to go for the grant there because uh, if anybody looks at the Cabot Road from the top of the hill up through, the, the granite trucks are raising okay. with that new pavement up there. It's all cracked, mm -hmm. starting to sag, should be shimmed and sealed. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So I would definitely go for that grant. Okay, all right. So, any do you guys have anything in the highway budget? Any questions at all? No, I'm just trying to calculate what the number was. Okay. Skip Lindsay. Oh, skip. Oh, skip. Just a second. Skip and then and then Monty. Just wondering if you're putting any money aside in the highway reserve fund for trucks and how much that oh, would be. Yeah. Well. Um, it's uh, $90,000 is what's in the budget for this year and the coming fiscal year. And then we take out of that the payments for the bucket loader and the low pro. So th there's about $56,000 that's going in um, yearly. Yearly. Yeah. Okay. And that's, that's just from the town budget. Um, and then there's a $12,000, $14,000 that comes from Swenson like, Quarry. Yeah, it's like a quarter mile yeah. from Swenson. goes into that. I was just curious. So. Yeah. Yeah. And we're kind of getting ready to make a commitment on a new truck for the following fiscal year. So, and we're hoping to be able to buy it outright and, and not have a, I mean, that's the plan. We aren't hoping that's, that's what we're going to just not have any on just doing just buy it outright. No interest. Um, okay. So Mon Monty, go ahead. Oh yeah. Sorry, Monty. Kind of a, well, how come there's no actual staff appreciation? Uh -huh, just That's that a brand in. new line it's item. Brand new. Oh, okay. So in the, it's always been taken out of the general fund, okay. and to be transparent, I, I okay. opened it up for the highway. Yeah. 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 So is there if, any, if, you, if you look in the general budget, the high, the staff appreciation was fully spent this year. Yeah. Good. Good. Any uh, thoughts on the greater? The greater. That's uh, probably be too. <sighs> it's going to have to be two more trucks than. before the greater, but um, hopefully. Um, what year is that greater? I don't even know. It's an old grade. 94. 94. Yeah. 94. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're just kind of patching it up when it needs to be. Yeah. Well, it's got very low hours on it. Marty, you can you hear that? We've been right through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it had a pretty major overhaul a couple of years ago. But yeah, that is, that probably once we replace the two um, big trucks, um, the grader will be next and and um, I know we had a there was a used grader that East Montpelier had a few years ago that we kind of got excited about um, but it was about half the price of a new one um, but it and needed we, a ton of work it needed a yeah, bunch yeah. Of yeah. So not a good deal a grader will be a pretty major expense um, but um, at some point we're definitely due yeah. anything else on the budget at all Chuck any any comments at all? In my opinion, what's the, oh, no, the bucket loader and the low pro are paid off and we are in a situation where we can buy trucks and pay for them without borrowing money? Okay. 
right. Yeah, we'll, we'll it's kind of playing no, I, I, I divided the highway number with the. It, never mind. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Nice job. So, so it sounds like you're not going to approve the budget tonight. Uh, <clears throat> is there anything? I mean, we could. Because things are getting really close. Yeah. We only have one more meeting before the town reports do. Everything seems to be here. We've gone over it mm -hmm. twice now. It's the second time. Yeah. Should we take a vote? I'm okay with voting, yeah. Uh huh. Oh, all right. Who's voting? Okay. So, do I hear a motion to approve the general? Budget and the town highway budget um, as they so move. Well, I'd like to ask a question. Sure. Uh, going back first, when you're talking about repairs to the town hall, uh huh. Mm -hmm. And what did, I can't hear much back yet, but it's okay. pretty low. But uh, what did you come up with the figures there? We don't really have any figures yet for a repair of the town hall. We do. We do have a one side of the roof that would be good to replace the uh, metal shingling. The, uh, that's on it uh, next summer, um, um, but we don't have, you know, the town hall really could use some major work on it, um, and so there, there is a small committee that's been meeting to kind of work out a plan for that, um, but that's as far as we've gotten so far. It's a little bit sad to see it left like that just to go downhill. It's not going to go downhill. It's going to well, get. Well, it is going down. I know it is. I know the it is. The last time the roads were put on was done with volunteers. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I know. I was up there. But, uh, <laughs> let, let me, things in town go to hell, and that's mostly putting it off. And at the same time, we're talking about, oh gosh, we need a grader. Mm. Why do we need a grader? What's the matter with that grader? There's nothing the matter with it. Nothing wrong with a grader. Mm. Why did we talk about trading? I, uh, I didn't. I asked a question. Because somebody asked a question about it, and, and it is something that, you know, we are aware that it's pretty old, but it still works fine. Um, and as Chuck mentioned, you probably couldn't hear that it does have a low number of hours on it, so it's probably good for quite a few more years, if we're, if we're lucky. Yeah, it should be. If we, we put $10,000 in this next budget that starts in July to do work on the town on the, building. On the so town. We did that's, set money aside to do that. That should be in good shape right now. The greater? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. actually, the greater would be doing a lot better if we had good, experienced greater operators. Mm -hmm. We don't have them. That's right. Them. Yep. Mm -hmm. And if you can't see that, we're driving around the back road with your eyesight's better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> We're, uh, we are aware. We are aware. <laughs> Not changing. Well, the, the hard thing is finding somebody that can run a grader that was willing to work for the town. Mm. A lot of town road crews are short people right now. Um, yes, we are. Including us. Yeah. You so. what? We're a little short on our road crew. Well. And finding the experienced Maybe you think you are, but system. you really aren't over what it always has been. That crew is two people to run that road crew, and they did Westwood Berry at the same time. Same two people. Mm -hmm. Now you're saying we're short because we've given up this piece of road and that piece of road and we're trading off. We're not. You're not, you're not getting the work out of the people that you got 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, yeah. it, 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 it seems like that's the answer a lot of businesses. Oh, they're not doing well. Let's add another person. Everywhere that's happening. You're not mm -hmm. adding another mm -hmm. person. You're just filling in for somebody because he isn't doing the job he's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. and I'll say that and shut up. Okay. <laughs> Can I refer to him about the town hall? Yes. I'm, I'm going to, uh, you yeah, know, we have that American Rescue Plan money that's coming to the town. And it's to cure problems that have been caused by COVID. Mm -hmm. And the, these guys want to have the town hall winterized so we can use it during the winter. <coughs> and uh, I'm putting together an application that's going to involve some, uh, some costs, you know, some estimates. Uh, I think the applications are going to be due to the committee and 
sometime in a couple of months. So that's, that's to do the structure, the things that need to be done. To yes. Structure. Yes. Yeah. It's going to involve uh, a grant to have a person who's uh, a, an expert in historical wood frame buildings to uh, analyze it and, and then see what we can do to make it year round. You want to be on the committee? No, I don't want to. This is something like you just head across the road that we finally got rid of either. Okay. <laughs> One of the big ones. Yeah. Early. Yeah, the, the town hall really is kind of a priority. It needs item. work. It's got to be fixed up. We want to keep the small community we got. Yep. If you right. want to turn big like everybody else is, right now half the, half the people in town, if you send out ballots, you're not getting half of them back because they don't know people. Mm -hmm. right. People in West Cobra have no damn idea who mm -hmm. someone is down here in South and, and we don't get to yell at me. Mm -hmm. You're not trading ideas. You're not trading complaints. That's one thing about West Cobra. We they come down, they complain, okay, we want to have a better job up there. So we make an agreement, we'll be there two hours after any snowstorm and go West Wilbur and work out to deal with them, happy. Mm -hmm. And it didn't cost us anymore. Mm -hmm. it, it, now, nobody's working together. It doesn't seem like we're cooperating. It seems like every time you want to do something, you almost got to get permission from Montpelier or some advice. And I don't think Montpelier and the people down there know hell of a lot the way their budget is right now. <laughs> we would so, agree again. <laughs> why are we yep. taking their advice? The other things we can go out and do on our own with good common sense. We got to thank them to get our money back. We send them. Right. They take our money now. They take the money and then give it back to us. Yeah. That's yeah. how they get control. It's yeah. called extortion. Okay. We see it the same way. <laughs> Anything more about the budgets at all? Um, so, do I hear a motion to approve the general and the town highway budgets? I'll move that we approve the proposed budgets. Okay. I'll second that. Any further discussion about the budgets at all? Okay, hearing none, um, do I... All those in favor say aye. 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 Sounds like we're good. Okay, so moving on, um, the Woodbury Town Plan, and Skip is here to to present that. So this is the uh, culmination of this two-year project that we've been uh, on. So I put together a package for you guys, mm -hmm. and in the package, if you want to open it, there's some information you should be aware of. Do my package. I have it on a display. TV. Or if I have it on my computer, I didn't print it. Oh, it's in here. It's like Christmas. Yeah, it is. The late Christmas present. So, uh, in the package is the town plan. And also, there's an appendix to the town plan, which is demographic uh, information, medium age, and uh, household income, things like that, ethnicity, all part of the appendix in the plan. Mm -hmm. So also in your package, we have the planning commission met last Monday, and we went through the plan once more, and per statute, we were required to adopt a resolution approving the plan. Okay, so there's a copy of that resolution in your package. Can, can you guys have your conversation outside, please? Can? Yep. So we can hear Skip and so the, the video doesn't get all confused. So if you look at that resolution, it gives a, a brief synopsis of our public outreach. And this is something we're compelled by statute to do. So if you turn it over, uh, the last sentence indicates resolve that the Woodbury Planning Commission submit the plan to the town clerk for filing and submit the plan to the select board for their approval. So uh, we had a quorum on Monday. Uh, Dave Manowski is still recovering from COVID and Michael uh, was at work. So we had four commissioners there and they unanimous, unanimously uh, approved and adopted the town plan. Today I stopped by the town service office and uh, per statute 
I handed uh, Robin a copy of the town plan, and there's a document that I have to submit to the state indicating that Robin was in receipt of the town plan, mm -hmm. and she initialed it in the appropriate uh, place. So the town plan has now been filed with the town clerk, and it's open for anyone to come in and get a paper copy of the town plan. The town plan is also posted on the Woodbury website. If you go on the, uh, on the dashboard, on the planning commission, and look on the planning, planning documents, it's all there. The resolution, the uh, town plan itself, and also the appendix to the town plan. So the next piece of paper you have in your package is a letter from the Regional Planning Commission. It's the only colorific one there. And if you look at the first sentence, uh, excuse me, first paragraph, first and second sentences, it says, upon reading this version of the town plan, the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission finds that it meets the municipal plan's statutory requirements and works toward attainment of the state planning goals. Additionally, we do have a draft energy plan, which is a component of the town plan. And the draft energy plan appendix finds that the contents meet the PUC energy planning standards of the municipal plan. So in essence, they gave tacit approval to the town plan and the energy plan, which will make final approval much easier when we submit them. Mm -hmm. We submit them to them. So the next piece of paper, this is the document that the state compels us to, to complete. It's called Plan and Bylaw Adoption Tools. And I've highlighted the sections that you guys are uh, compelled to do. Mm -hmm. That starts on Roman numeral two, and that's easy one, right? Uh, parts A, B, C and D. I can get into that uh, at a later time, but in essence, <clears throat> what you, the select board, has to do is with, in 120 days hold a public meeting. And it also stipulates that if you have over 2,500 people in your municipality, you have to have two, I think we're under 1,000, I think we're 900 and something, that we're compelled to have at least one public meeting. Duly warned, and I can walk you through how to duly warn a meeting for a, a town plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, also, what I did is <coughs> I copied the checklist for municipal plan adoption from the Department of Housing and Community Development Planning Manual. And this is not legally, but kind of lays out the steps. And if you look at page three, it's a checklist for municipal plan adoption, and it focuses on the selector stage. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's in plain English precisely what has to happen. And there are, there are options for you folks, you guys, to approve the plan. You can, amongst yourself, approve the plan subsequent to that public hearing. Or alternatively, you can hold a, a, a special meeting and adopt it by an Australian ballot. Mm -hmm. But it's your choice. Mm -hmm. anyway. And just for, uh, I don't, I'm not sure if uh, Paul and Chris know this, but at a, one of the town plan hearings, you know, I've been on the, and I'm on the planning commission, um, I basically promised to recuse myself uh, as a select board member um, from uh, voting on the town plan. So, um, so one thing I've asked you guys to do is acknowledge receipt of the plan. That's something you have to do for the record tonight. Do we just have to note it in the minutes that we received it? Is that how we do it? Uh, so, I don't know how to or do we have to sign? You don't need, there's no, nothing you have to initial. It's just to acknowledge the receipt. Okay. okay. Duly acknowledged. Okay, cool. Right. 
So now we have 120 days to hold a hearing, if I understand. If I understand that correctly. Yeah. So you have four months, in essence. To hold the hearing. To hold the hearing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I can walk you through what a hearing notice looks like for something like this. Okay. And how to put it in the uh, newspaper or not. <laughs> <laughs> or, or try. Or try. We have a try problem with the newspaper right now. <laughs> Which newspaper to avoid putting the notice in? We have a lot of trying up to get stuff in the paper that doesn't end up in the paper. So what's left for the planning commission? The planning commission, for all intents and purposes, the work is done. Unless you folks have any issues with the plan, or during that public meeting, members of the public have any issues with the plan. And then we'll get some comments. We'll get comments. Yeah. Yep. I want to comment. I, I read it, skimmed it through, and I, I thought it was beautifully done. Mm -hmm. Somebody, there was, a lot of, there was a lot of work in there. Sure mm -hmm. was. Yeah. No question about that. So, uh, yeah, thank you, Paul. I appreciate that. Somebody's a wordsmith. Well, <laughs> amongst us, mm. especially Mr. Michael, I think. So what I have to do now is I have to close out two contracts with the Regional Planning Commission. The contracts terminate uh, January 31st, so we're in the final billing stages for that. Uh, Brandy's waiting an invoice or two invoices uh, from the Regional Planning Commission. And since we have a grant through the Department of Housing and Community Services, I have to write a project wrap-up uh, narrative, if you want to call it. Uh, how we spent the money, why we spent the money, what kind of work products did we produce, and send all the work products for that grant back to them so they can close out our grant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, all the documents are on the website. Robin is now compelled to have paper copies at the town hall for the statute. So, just let me know when you want to work on uh, setting up that next hearing. Okay, here. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, probably we'll work on that after we get town meeting. We got to get town meeting town schedule. reports out. So yeah. probably we'll sit on it for a little bit here. Sure. Okay. Let so. us catch up. Yeah. Because we'll be part of that meeting. We'll go on. <laughs> probably do that hearing here. more closer to spring. Springtime. When people are back from spring. Florida. And yeah. Mm -hmm. So. April, so April. Right. Just as give us, we can get it first. done before April. Is that we have for the end of April? Because that's our four. We get our four month window. Yeah. Okay. 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 So that's all I have. Thank you, Skip. Thanks, Skip. Yeah. Anybody have any questions for Skip or the select board about oh, the town plan? Special packet. Well, I know you don't read the email, so. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I. Do. <laughs> Did the problem is I get several hundred a week, so I don't I get to all of them. <laughs> okay, so I guess we're ready for the next agenda item, which is basically continuing a conversation that we had at our last select board meeting um, under the title of derelict properties. Um, and I know Bob has been doing um, some research into what we as a town can do about um, some of these problem properties. And um, so maybe, Bob, if you'd like, um, do you want to just share some of the... Well, I think uh, what, I, what I found is that in about the past few years, many towns, cities in Vermont have adopted ordinances to address this. Uh, some of them are 22 pages, some of them are far less. And I think what's going to have to happen is you know, what problem are we trying to solve? And then it'll, it won't be that hard to uh, write how to solve it. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of them include many, many other problems than just derelict buildings. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, they have impoundment yards and, <coughs> and for vehicles and all kinds of other other things. Uh, Barry has an interesting one. Burlington certainly does. Uh, Island Pond does. Uh, there's many, many other, many towns throughout mm -hmm. the state. I don't know all of them. Uh, 
didn't find out from the uh, League of Cities and Towns, but uh, I don't think I'll look through all of them. <laughs> yeah, generally what we kind of do is look for other towns that are similar in size, maybe similar in a rural nature. You know, looking at Burlington's doesn't make a whole lot of sense for for Woodbury, but something like Island Pond or um, you know similar. Um, you know, I know Wolcott's been struggling with this. That's where we um, got the uh, junk ordinance that was you know basically a carbon copy of the VLCT junk ordinance, and and you know we changed that a little bit when we were working on that initially. Um, it would seem that with Wolcott, as I understand, it doesn't have zoning, so there, would, there wouldn't be anything for... For the zoning ordinance for part. The zoning yeah. ordinance. Yeah. So the, the, uh, the select board would need to, yeah. to make one. Yeah. Well, that's what they, they had made, um, a junk ordinance, and they actually adopted it. The town adopted it. Um, and uh, I guess, you know, from talking with uh, one of the select board members there, this was over a year ago, uh, maybe even two years ago, again, the, you know, he, he brought up that the hardest part of any ordinance really is the enforcement Personal. of it. Um, and, you know, they generally, you know, and the, but the junk ordinance does have very clear text on how to proceed with noncompliance um, and with the, uh, uh, the enforcement is the is the gray area. Um, there's, there's already something in Woodbury zoning uh, addressing mm -hmm. that. So yeah. the idea of an ordinance could, might be a duplication. Right. That one uh, I think kicks in. I think it's fifty dollars a day for each right. violation. Yeah. So in in a year, just for one violation, it doesn't take very long before you're up close to forty thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you collect that? You don't. That's, that's, that's the enforcement part. You don't. Exactly. Exactly. It doesn't do I just gave you the answer. answer. You don't. Well, yeah. Well, that's yes. true. Yeah, there is. Uh, in, um, mm -hmm. Then it usually goes to court and takes a number of years. Right. It can. And uh, it also, uh, violations that can turn into liens that mm -hmm. are in the land records. Right. And yeah. if somebody's selling a property and there's any bank or you know, uh, mortgage involved, they aren't going to sell it. Mm -hmm. And uh, if somebody comes along with cash, that might be a different story. Mm -hmm. But what they're buying is, is they're buying something with problems. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know what would happen there. Yeah. I think a title search would show some sort of indication that there was a lien. You should find that. that. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, even a lien has to be perfected by going to court. <coughs> yes. yeah. Well, that's a 30 day thing. That's. Mm -hmm. So, so where are we at? And we were going to start in our current circumstance. We were going to be sending a, a letter of, um, you know, okay, yes, the I, warning I, letter for the fine. I contacted the, uh, the town's attorney, mm -hmm. and he put me on. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I would be, you know, I could write one, but these things can get really scrutinized when it comes to court. Well, uh, that's why I would suggest having the. Lawyer, yeah. right? Didn't you didn't you send that after the notice of alleged violation from months ago? Didn't you already send that to the attorney? I we we just do that. we just sent um, to the, the to we sent the um, receipt from the certified letter that they had received a notice yeah. of violation. We hadn't considered um, finding them. In fact, I wasn't really even aware that there was such a. a statement in the zoning ordinance. Um, Bob corrected us on that. So at our last select board meeting, um, we decided that we would start um, imposing fines on... Um, but, didn't, but didn't you send... Yes, yes. So somewhere appeal? somewhere in the Washington County yes. court civil system. court system, yeah. there is a... Um, or the attorney's office, if he yeah. hasn't filed it. He right. Didn't file it. He yeah. did. Yeah. That one's filed. The Hainsworth yeah. one's it's filed. It's yeah, it's filed. Okay. Yeah. So what we got to do is get the letter done for Cabot Road, right? Is what you're working on now. Yes. Well, well there's Hainsworth Road. Well, well, no, we're, we're going to send a letter of notice of violation to the Cabot Road complaint. Right. And, and also, we're going to prepare the fines for the Hainsworth yeah. Road, right? Well, we need to. You need to send a letter notifying them that they're going to be fined. That's all part oh, of okay. the. Okay, whatever the process is. Hey, yeah. the, the attorney did say the quicker way 
you can do both. Uh -huh. You can have it road zoning and an emergency health zone. Right, oh. that's the other that's the other part that we did talk about. Um, so yeah, the emergency... no trespassing signs go up. You gotta be careful. Right, you mean you can't go on the property. You better not, yeah. Without a warrant. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the, the emergency, Ryan McCall uh, mentioned this also. He's the A&R um, enforcement and compliance person that with both uh, the Ainsworth Road property and um, with the property um, up off Flat Street, um, an emergency health order um, would probably be the quickest way to get some type of That's fine, action. Please. Action, yeah. And basically the reason that the town could do that is that both of these dwellings, there are people living there full time and neither of them have any type of sewage system or uh, potable water. Um, now, the Department of Children and Families is looking into this right now. Uh -huh. Well, Good. can the attorney prepare an emergency health order that we can then execute? Uh, I don't see why that couldn't happen. This last winter, I was part of uh, an emergency health order. In fact, we, we were right, involved in right. that. Yep. Um, and we did get the help of um, the Callis health officer, uh, Jay Copping. Um, I don't know if he would be, these are a little bit more uh, involved. I don't know if he would be willing to help or not. Um, the, the catch is that we don't have a health officer. Um, then it, uh, it in that case, it defaults to the, the select board of the Department of Health. Really? Yes. Oh, I'd love to stick it on the Department of Health to do this work. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? And they're going to say it's the default yeah, no, to the chairman of the select board. It's going to come back to us. Right. It's going to come back to us. Yeah, it would not. It's going to come back yeah. to the select board. I mean, Don't you have to have some evidence to, to do a health order? Well, that's, that's the other part. You have to do an inspection in order to... to um, which would require a search warrant, apparently, with the yeah. no trespass. With no trespass, that makes sense. Yeah, so you so have to get permission get from the property owner in order to do an inspection. So um, unless you have, like, sewage running on the ground or something, I don't know how you're going to Well, get if that. sewage was running on the ground, and, and uh, well, this is what the health department told me, if it was running on, on the ground onto somebody else's property, <laughs> then the health department would step in. Uh -huh. Until that time. Um, can you sense my frustration? Yes, I, I think. Yeah, they and I might step in at that point too. Yeah. So we would we would have to probably get some kind of search warrant, um, and probably have at least for one of the properties have uh, some police backup in order to do an inspection. It you know it's just it's kind of a big a big mess. Um, the, the interesting thing is I kind of keep track of some of the numbers and over the years about uh, permits. And I found the same thing that, that I did with discipline in the schools, public schools. Six percent are incorrigible. Six percent One of what? Time, <laughs> it's going to be trouble. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Most everybody is fine. They want to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. they're, they're compliant. And, but you get that one out of 20. That's right. And that, that's what the, f the fellow from Wolcott told me with this junk ordinance is that most people, you know, once they're notified, they do want to become yeah. compliant, um, but there are those people that... They're mean. ...that uh, don't. Mm -hmm. Well, Michael, at, at the very least, if you're supposed to get a permit to build anything in town and they don't, why can't the zoning administrator send a letter with a, with a, with a fine behind it without a lawyer's... I mean, I would think that would be part of his job to do that. Yeah. Right. That's what we're directing so him to do. We're just wanting him to have a lawyer, lawyer review then? it. Why well, because if there's anything, there's got to be a. I mean, you got to be able to go on VLCT and find a boilerplate yeah. letter. Yeah, I would hope. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. should be pretty simple. Well, what we've already directed him to do was to prepare that letter, and just have the lawyer review it, just to make sure it's good. Yeah, that's so that's what we thought we were going to be able to use, and when the attorney saw it. I bet there was I bet there was a dozen calls back and forth. Right. So we need to do that. That's what we can do right now. Is what we need to do. Yeah. And, and having the attorney vet it as if you know as it because you know it does seem pretty obvious to me that they're you know whether you find them or give them a notice of violation there probably won't be any compliance. So if you haven't done 
things properly up to the point where it does go to the courts, then the court just throws it all out. The thing of it is, if you, get, if you send out something like that, it's kind of like getting rid of an employee. If you, if you write them up, write them up, write them up, and it mm -hmm. comes time to get rid of them, mm -hmm. at least you got something in that file. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So, so we file. need Bob to do that. Do that letter, yeah. get it approved yeah. by the attorney, and then send it. Yeah. Certified mail. Is it just a letter that says you notice need notice of violation. This is this is for yeah. the flat street. Right, flat yeah. street so notice they of violation. Say that because they're living in that RV that that's no because that's they built a structure. They built a structure. Oh, okay. To, um, but it's just a letter that says you need a permit. Well, they got two problems. They're yeah. in the camper for more than 180 days, and they've got a structure they've constructed without a zoning without a zoning permit. permit. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the two things the letter needs to address. Aren't they dumping sewer on the ground? I don't know. I don't, don't have any evidence of that, but we'll find it. Yeah, yeah. We got. Mm -hmm. so we had, we had another one in town. I remember there was three RVs, and you could see the toilet paper right down under them with a. Right. And uh, tried to do something. And uh, when I called the state, and then, and uh, this is right going into one of the five cleanest lakes in the whole mm -hmm. state. Mm -hmm. And uh, the guy said, where is it? And I told him where it was. He said, well, that's a wetlands. I said, yeah. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Yeah. Well, there's, there's enforcement for you. And that's, that's the big, that seems to be the big Well, thing. let's get our letter going anyway. Yeah. And our, our fines our going. Fines running. Whatever you can do to get that moving. Okay. Can I make a comment on that? Uh, let's skip. Skip Lindsay had his hand up, and then you're next. Go ahead, I'm just skip. wondering, is there a list of derelict buildings in in the town of Woodbury? No, no. Well, they're coming more frequent. Yeah, that's the problem. You know, yeah. they're becoming bigger problems. They are. The problem with these two properties is that you know the houses were not lived in for a long time. Um, some people have mentioned that they were condemned. I wasn't aware of that, but not by us. I don't know who condemned um, them, but yeah. Um, so you know they should have never been sold in the first place. So you have p uh, people that are really low income that have this chance to buy a house for ten thousand dollars and they're naive enough, or whatever, um, mm -hmm. to do that. And then there's, you know, the up on Flat Street they bought this house and and now they're living in this camper that's really not even set up to be lived in uh, in a pile of junk. Mm -hmm. They've been there for, this will be their second winter that they've been there. Um, and the house, you know, they it's obvious that they really can't afford to fix the house. The house. There was very little done on it over the summer. So, and it's an older couple. Um, so it's just kind of a sad situation. It was interesting, uh, Marshfield, I was talking to one of the selectmen there a couple days ago. And, uh, he said when they had an incident, a similar one, uh, quite a few years ago, they had a, a particular official in town that their job was to find a place for these, uh -huh. for, for somebody to go. Yeah. Uh, there is help that they could be offered to the, I, I'm talking about Flat Street right at the moment. Mm -hmm. but, uh, Chuck, you had a comment? I think you really need to go ahead with a letter and all that stuff, but mm -hmm. I also think once you do that, then you're going to have to grow a backbone and back it up. Uh -huh. yeah. it just, you just can't uh, threaten them and then not follow through with it. I, I think it needs to be brought up and whether you got to have a special, I mean a special, special town meeting or whatever and get the people behind it. And if you're going to do it, do it. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do? <laughs> well, first thing is get the letter started and you tell them whatever you want to tell them in there and at the end of 30 days or 60 days or whatever it is, you need to back yourself up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to go up there and okay. tell me that, whatever you're going to do, I mean, you, you just can't threaten them and walk away from it and right. think it's going to go away because it isn't. Yeah, the only thing we can really oppose on them are fines. Um, they own the property. It's you can't really evict them from their property uh, unless there's health order you could. maybe through the emergency health order you can. That's that's why that's been advised uh, for us to look well, I'm into. Well, thinking that if somebody put a motorhome up there and build a roof over it without a permit, that 
you ought to be able to do something right. with you. Right. Yeah, get them out there or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, the structure over the camper uh, could be removed. Yeah. Well, Although, if, if they don't remove it, I don't know who does. Um, I didn't know this. No. Well, with, with, the, uh, with the motor vehicle, sometimes somebody says, well, it's got wheels on it, it's got a number plate, it's got a motor. I can, I can have it here. And that's not true. Right. That's not true. The 180 days, things change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, he's kind of made it more of a permanent structure, given that he's built something permanent around it. You know, it's like 8 o'clock last night, County. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's insane. No it's crazy, yep. honestly. Skipped it. Yeah, I just, I have a derelict structure close to my house that's mm -hmm. been uninhabited for close to 10 years now, and it's falling mm -hmm. down. And it doesn't have any occupants or anything like that, so it doesn't rise to this level. Not yet. And, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just bats and raccoons in it now. Mm. Just wondering, who do I dr address that letter to to make a complaint to have this derelict house looked at? I would say the property owner first. But in, in um, municipal leadership, do I send it to the select board or do I send it to the zoning administrator? I would say for that, I mean, this is just my thought on that, it would be the select board. I mean, we do have a dangerous building ordinance. Well, I think, Skip, that your particular situation is a perfect example of what we could do as a town to prevent more of these from happening. Sure. Like, let's address it before it becomes a bigger issue. And I think that's part of the discussion that we had last week, or the last meeting, and kind of what we're talking about now. And I agree 100% with Chuck that you can't, you know, start this process and not enforce stuff. And if we're going to have ordinances, they need to be enforced. And I think as a town, the people of this town, if that means that we've got to use resources that are outside of our means, like, you know, hiring a sheriff or whatever it means to enforce these things. I mean, I'm not about violence or anything like that, but at the same time, you know, rules are rules, and we all live in this town, and it's just a matter of time before it comes into someone else's neighborhood. It's growing more and more. Mm -hmm. it's, and, you know, maybe, if nothing else, the town of Woodbury can set an example for the rest of these towns that um, you can't, you just can't come into a community and just try to live like this and it'd be okay. And as a, as a, an individual who owns this property, there is a certain level of responsibility onto them too. The woman who sold this house to these people, the bank or the, you know, the finance company who sold the house to the people over on Ainsworth Road, there's some accountability there too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, that might be another direction to go in. It's like, hey, it's on the homeowner or the property owner, and if you don't either tear it down or do something about it, maybe you'll be fine or something. But... Um, well, I, I tried to find out or contact the uh, company, if you want to call them that, that owned like the Ainsworth property. Yeah. And they were like, they, they were like 10 steps down from the originator. The people got $186,000 and what? they took off. They took what? off and left it. And so what happens when there's default? Then the mortgage gets sold down the line until it gets mm -hmm. down to pennies on the dollar. And you try to reach little contact those people like I did. And I saw online, a lot of people are trying to find out, how do you contact them? Where are they? Who are they? And nobody could find out. Mm -hmm. I think, um, was it Skip, right? What you talk about the property next to his, nobody's in it. Um, I think something like that, if you are going to contact the owner and start buying them, he's probably just going to sell it in it probably end up with some people like the people are up there in there anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but that's why we Yeah, exactly. Those. So I don't know if there's some, some way we can incentivize maybe like uh, we get people in this town their kids are growing up and looking for a place, some way to help them get into a place they can build on, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, rather than it being sold to someone. All right. I mean, to me, a, a house that has no septic system or no water shouldn't be sold to anybody. Um, yes, why couldn't the town have their own set of rules like that? Like, if you have a house that hasn't been moved in for, say, two years or three years, before they can buy it, the town has to sign off on it. Mm -hmm. 
there's no septic, no water. We would have to adopt some kind of ordinance. That's what we're talking about. That's what these other cities... Right, we're kind of stuck with what we got right now, which isn't much. Someone would have to propose something. I think the problem with that is if, if I own a piece of property and I want to sell it, I don't I mean, yeah, yeah. you can't sign off on it. I mean, it's my property. Yeah. I mean, not to, but to be devil's advocate. I mean. Right, so these things get difficult. Well, yeah. but the point yeah. is, it's different if you have a piece of property that you just, you know, you want to sell it because no, you you know, someone just wants to have a piece of property. It's another thing when you sell something and the intention is to actually live there. So it's called development. Mm -hmm. So if I have a raw piece of land and I sell it to someone with the intention for them to develop it, that be a residential property, there needs to be a certain process that they, they would have to go through to know that that property could be developed. It shouldn't be any different than a house. Okay, I'm buying this piece of trash because I want to I wanna fix it up. There should be certain things that already have to be in place or developable so that they, they can. And, you know, like the property up on Flat Street, even if they have the resources, the financial resources to fix it up, it's doubtful that they would even be able to meet the guidelines necessary to have the water, have the sewer, uh, because the current system or one that was in place when they lived there is probably long gone. It hasn't been used in almost 20 years, which means it's pretty much non-existent, which means you have to have a mill put it. Where are they going to do that? It's going to be designed. They mm -hmm. have a property to do it. You know? That's a state law. It's going to be designed. Be right. So that in itself is an issue. That should be held. Mm -hmm. I feel like the people who sold it, them the property needs to hold some accountability to that. Well, there's one way mm -hmm. that can be done. And if there was an attorney involved, there's what's called errors in emissions. And that is serious. The uh, attorneys are scared to death of that. If you walk in on a, uh, and there was one I was, I was just aware of about four years ago when that happened. The guy bought a piece of property and uh, somebody started making noise about it, a neighbor, a lot of noise. He went to his attorney that was involved in the deal and he said, we, got, we may have an errors and omissions here. And it got straightened out. It took, I think, six, six times in court but they got it. There you go, so, neighbors. So at one point you're spending enough money on the legal fees so that you might as well just buy it. Buy a way to buy the property. Mm -hmm. You know, have a fun, have a rich neighbor. If they want to sell it to you, <laughs> they want to sell it. So um, sounds like we're ready to have that letter get written. Yes. Um, um, the letter and, and the fines. One and letter fines. and one set of fines. Yeah. For the other property. Yeah. And so the one. Some, some some something to look at for an ordinance. Yeah. So, the, so for so for Flat Street, basically, we need to write a notice of violation. That that hasn't happened That's yet. That's the beginning of the process. That's the beginning of the process. And then for the Ainsworth Road property, we need to write a letter uh, warning them that if they aren't compliant um, within a certain number of days, that they'll will be fining them. And I think there's. Somewhere I found language on how the proper procedure for that. Um, there was some state statute that. Um, there sure is. Yeah. Isn't so, that what, what handing that original NOIB over to the lawyer was supposed to result in? Yep. Uh, yes. It's not not it's so stuck much. In the no, court I mean. System somewhere? That was just, according to our town lawyer, that would be um, a way of. Um, you know, having the court make a decision on on the non non compliance mm -hmm. on the on that notice. Mm -hmm. um, what will probably happen in that case is that we will find them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they'll be and they won't pay it. And I think there is a limit on how much you can fine someone. Um, so we'll probably reach that limit. And then once again, we'll sub have our town lawyer submit this to the Washington County Court. So there'll be two, mm -hmm. two basically two uh, separate actions. Separate actions. Really? The court's just yeah. going to essentially enforce your zoning ordinance, right? Well, don't they do that by imposing a fine? I don't know what they do. No. I'm not, yeah. I'm not familiar with, with that. The court will do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's been they my experience do. in court. Who's the town lawyer now? Uh, his name, um, Michael. Aaron. Tarrant. 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 He's the one handling the uh, Slate Ridge thing. 
Really? Uh-huh. Right. Something wicked. Yeah. Mm. So, so that's so we should we should put together a notice of violation for the folks up on Flat Street and then a, a warning letter to the Ainsworth Road folks that that the town will start fining them. Um, and you know you can go and look and see how many cars are there, and you know you could just. Fifty dollars per car. That's that's the issue at the moment. We aren't even addressing the fact that they're living in the house without any sewage or water. Whose signature does that letter go up? So the letter zoning letter, the zoning, zoning administrator. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The, uh, the other thing, I, I'm not I'm not an attorney. I don't want to pretend to be. I, remember seeing in the state statutes that if the fine is ignored mm -hmm. it's double well so again that takes the court to do that <laughs> right but yeah. the problem is you get down to where they can't pay yeah or won't or won't so if, is the Ainsworth road one basically about the number of cars well that's for, the initial that notice, the of notice of violation notice of violation that the was so easy to cure right yeah but, yeah. Just well, not but it hasn't <laughs> been they've added more cars mm. yeah that could probably also be an emergency health order too. I yes, I know. There's yeah. no septic system. I mean, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can look into that. I, maybe I'll and try it's to. Near Brook. Yeah, we can look into that a little bit more. Um, the the thing that in, we need to figure out is how you know that would require inspecting the property and how how does that happen when the property owner is not willing to have anyone on their property. In the case of the, you know, the emergency health order last winter, the uh, landlord, we act basically had to get permission to do an inspection, and we were given the permission. So, by, I'm not going to say who by. No, by the landlord. Or by, by the, the landlord. Yeah, oh, okay. he's the owner. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, why? Uh, why can't you research a permit process? If he's living in, he's got a septic system. He must have a permit for it. Does it work? Ever septic system man when we were growing up? You if you research permit process and he ain't got it, it Oops. should be headed right down the main drag. Which which property are you talking about? Any of them. Mm -hmm. Any of them. Uh huh. If yeah, people were living in that Ainsworth Road property for you know yeah, twenty time. years ago, years. Mm -hmm. fifteen years ago. Well, mm -hmm. the state has so but just the, but they never the had. One on okay. Flat Street, I'm sure there weren't anything put in there twenty years ago. Up on and Flat Street. Street. Yep. Mm -hmm. What's that? Up on Flat Street, you're talking about now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If they can come up with a permit where they put a septic system in there, I'd say, with hands down, you should be able to fix it right up. <sighs> well, we'll look into it. Yeah. Well, the, the issue can be that they say, well, it's, we've got a grandfather system here. And uh, I was talking with the uh, septic guy about a month ago, and he said they're starting to change. He said, I, whenever I do a septic inspection, there's like 30 points, and it's like a $600 fee. Mm -hmm. He says, what the realtors or the person selling the house does for an inspection, he says, it's just a smell test, and they charge them 100 bucks, and off they go. He said, the state looks like they're going to be, be changing that, that scene. Uh-huh. Okay. So... Can I ask a question? Sure. So the last time we went out for reappraisal, if, if the person who was conducting it found either structures that were on there, I'm assuming they were added to the listers card. How was it handled? And and since there's over a hundred thousand in the the reappraisal, is that anybody your lister? I'm a, yeah, and all, we don't, uh, I, I, there are some that are on, there's notes, and that it's like uh, salvage. Now when something's salvage, that, that, sh that should trigger right there that it's, it's condemned. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't. And I think maybe that's, that's something that should be worked into an ordinance. 
I mean, maybe the listeners could take a look at those two properties and see what they have for information on them. Well, it's not only that, it's that there's nothing, I could build something up in the woods and nobody would ever know. Uh-huh. Not saying I did. Really? I got <laughs> three zoning permits <laughs> since we moved up there. My point being is that there's no repercussion of, of even if, if well, that's not he gets totally a call. true. I remember um, the Cahagan place uh, many years ago. Um, they started building a new cabin there, and whoever was the zoning administrator uh, was notified about that, and they actually halted the um, the building of it. The, mm -hmm. the cement foundation has been there for years, but they never finished it. So the, the rub comes if they don't halt. Right. You yeah. And ask them, and that's the problem we're dealing with is when someone doesn't do what you ask them right. to do. Yeah. And the, zone, the listers get a copy of every zoning permit, so they go around in the spring and look yeah, at Yeah, but that's only if you file it. Well, <laughs> there are people who cheat, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm saying, you know, if for those people that don't get permits, mm -hmm. and yeah. is there repercussion or a, a letter that you send out to people to find, to make up? Right, that's what we've asked him to yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. And usually people do. If they start something without a permit, and you tell them, whoops, they should have had a permit. We're yeah. down to his one out of 20, it's though. Miserable, right? Right. Yeah. But I think, too, that that's all fine and dandy. Like, OK, I started this project. Like, oh, I'm encroaching on my neighbor's property, and I didn't get a permit, but it's 2 thirds of the way done. And now I'll file a permit. Are you going to make the guy tear down his two thirds of the property? No. Oh, that I've seen a couple happen. that they did, yeah, but they, it went to court. It took about six years. I have seen it. Yeah, it's, it's rare. rare. Yeah. Right. It's what it took rare. was that prop. The aggrieved property owner sued the property owner with the violation, and that's what settled it. It comes, it comes down to is the town going to handle the legal bills, or is the abutter? The problem we're dealing with right now, and I'm just going to cut to the chase, is we have very minimal enforcement ability with our current zoning ordinance because everybody said the correct things but we have we have to follow statute and what we have actually written in law for here for the town well, even, um, even further, that's well, all we can do you go further than that um, I mean, uh, everybody's I know pretty much volunteer I mean you guys don't get paid a lot of money I understand that but you can't keep kicking the can down the down the road uh, Reed and Russell came last meeting and we're going over the same thing again. So the letter's going to be sent out. Right, nobody's kidding. We've told them to do it, so it should be getting done. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't want to come to the next select board meeting and talk about the same thing again. Yep. And again, I understand everybody's busy. Nobody's going to pay a lot of money to do this, but. Yeah, I think getting those letters uh, written and, and getting them vetted by the lawyer and then getting them sent out certified mail is the is the next step. Again, if the, if the zoning administrator, if they, if they didn't get a permit, he shouldn't have to get a lawyer to okay his letter. I mean, that's yeah. his job. I agree with that. That's a very simple letter. The first right. one. Right. The problem is, if there's a mistake in that letter and you go to court, yeah. it will get tossed. So all we're asking for is to have their lawyer review it. Again, you can go on the LCT. I'm sure yeah, they got a boilerplate. There's, plate. there's blank documents. Okay. So By just warning you, I've been yeah. to court lots and lots yeah. of times. If there's one mistake on a document, but they if you toss came, it. If you, you need your lawyer to get back to you, I mean. You but can, the again. LCT has lawyers. Yes. I mean, that we'll do it for free. Right. We can send it. I'm just right. saying I would highly suggest that if you're going to go somewhere where you think it's going to end up in court, right. you better send it and have it vetted by your lawyer. Because I'm just saying, if you make a mistake and you get two years into this, and well, they'll, they'll toss it and you've got to start over. It yeah. just seems to me the first letter is probably not going to go anywhere. It's just a, a warning that you That's are right. in violation of the zoning ordinance of, or what have you. You didn't file a permit, you're encroaching on you know, the property lines or whatever. I wouldn't expect that this one letter was going to be the one and only letter, that there would be several after that. And that as the, the strength of the warnings within the letters then would require additional uh, vetting perhaps by a lawyer the more you get into this isn't going to end it with one letter stating that oh by the way you're in violation of the zoning the ordinance but it would be good since you know we've been talking about this neighbor for the last couple of meetings now that you know maybe just sending that letter saying look you're in violation mm -hmm. and maybe with miracles he'll realize or unknowingly 
um, that, oh, I didn't realize I was in violation, and go clean it up. But then, so, but then he has an opportunity to for apply appeal for a on permit. the permit. First letter, the judge is there. Why would he get a permit so then? He could apply for a permit. He tosses the whole okay. thing there to over the And then it would be denied. The court and then you'd have something to dozens. Right. And exactly. you'd go to the Board of Adjustment, but that probably wouldn't happen. Well, and then you'd have something to attend for enforcement. So can we wrap this up? Yeah, so you're going to do the letter. Please have it done by the next meeting if we can. If we can't get our attorney, then have the League of Cities and Towns attorney do it, yeah. vet it, just look at it. It's all it takes is a review mm -hmm. and send it. I'll tell them the attorney that you guys aren't very happy about yeah, it. We just need it reviewed and sent. No. No. Normally what happens is with a zoning uh, violation, I go and can visit and oh, they are fine. Things are, s that's it, it's done. But when you've got somebody who's mm -hmm. going to fight you and has no intention. Oh yeah. I'm very aware. Yeah. Well, we Every haven't we haven't seen how the folks on Flat Street. Yeah, Flat Street. We haven't seen how they respond. We know uh, Ainsworth uh, Road. Ainsworth is. He's uh, already threatened the uh, surveyors. Yeah. yeah. That's not a good sign. Yeah. No. But that's what we, that's our first step. So that's what we've got to do, and we'll go from there. Stay okay. tuned. Okay. 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 Uh, so I <laughs> shall we move on? Yes, please. please. Okay. Um, so next on the agenda are select board meetings. Um, as I mentioned at the uh, last meeting, we are now meeting in what's called, a, what we call the community room, um, what the school calls the annex room. Um, it's actually a, a, an additional classroom that the school uses. And the school has a policy asking um, that anyone inside on the school space uh, wear a mask and and most of us are wearing masks tonight um, I don't know if we want to have a mask mandate for any of the um, inside meetings um, the school is going to be much more adamant when we have our ARPA uh, informational meeting on uh, January 4th when we use the gym um, that people who attend those meetings uh, wear a mask. That's the school policy. Um, so I'm a little bit worried about um, people not complying and the school getting upset and then we don't have that space if we're going to have a town meeting there. Um, so that's kind of, yes Skip? So we own the building? We, we, leased it. we are leasing, we're leasing, we're leasing it. it. Last year during the emergency uh, shutdown uh, restrictions um, the town was not even though we were, we own the building and we're leasing it to them um, okay. they we, the town was not allowed to use the building at all um, so yeah that's you know they they have the right as the leasee to to dictate the use of that um, so, I mean, I would prefer not to have a mandate. I like to just, uh, as I noted in the, the, um, the warning, the agenda here, that the masks are strongly urged. Um, and I, I think it's better to leave it that way. I'm definitely not in favor of mandating anything. Okay, all right. That's um, just I think we, I, I normally don't wear one. I put one on today, but mm -hmm. um, I respect those that don't want to wear one, too. So that's why I just don't like, okay. want the mandate. All right. Um, so we probably should check with the school about these special meetings in the gym about how yeah, they feel about that. We should ask yep. people that oh, that's their place at the school. Kids at kids at school yeah. aren't given an option. Right. Right. Yeah, I don't think that's right either, but that's my yeah. view. So we should look at the school's policy and say, are they saying they're required to wear a mask? They have said yes. that. They have oh, already that. said that. Oh, that's, okay. already, that's already established. There's no question about that. Okay, part. so. No. No. All right, so um, at the last meeting I uh, announced that I would like to step down as the chair and that I will be finishing no. out this we, year my term to no. town meeting day, but unfortunately Paul had to rush off to an emergency, yeah. so we didn't get to discuss the, the governance of the select board um, <laughs> there at, at that <laughs> meeting. So um, I, you know, I'm willing to uh, plug away at, at doing the agendas and the minutes. Um, you can be the clerk. But the I, yeah, I could be the clerk. It would be good for someone, because I won't be on the select board after town meeting, it would be good for someone to start to get a feel for um, what it is to be 
the chair and the responsibilities. Um, and I'm kind of, you know, you guys, it's up to you, Chris and Paul, to figure out who, who might want to do that. Um, and I'm willing to, you know, obviously I will help out in any way that I can. Um, but, um, so that could either happen tonight or you guys could think about it. And Let's uh, talk about it for one more week. Yeah, okay. We've got a lot of curiosity. Oh, you know, Paul. Well, I'm finishing my third year in March. I know that. Are you going to run again? How about Chris? Six months. <laughs> you haven't decided? I said I don't think so at the moment. I'm talking with you. I just, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've got work issues and things that are creating problems. We'll talk about it some more. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I'm willing to do it. I just, I, I'm afraid I don't. I can't put any more time into it than I'm putting into it. That's the issue. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I, there's a lot of frustration with what's going on, but the problem is we're all working every single day. Right. Um, to sit here and going to research something, I just simply don't have time. Mm -hmm. um, it takes it takes a lot of time. Um, you know, it's something that uh, we might want to discuss into the future and you know beyond my being on the select board is is that some towns have um, you know. Like Hardwick, they have a town manager, but Hardwick is a lot bigger community than Woodbury. But there are um, steps down from a full-time town manager to an, a, a part-time town manager, uh, an assistant town manager. Um, I know at the last select board training that VLCT did, they had a section on that. Um, and basically, you know, that's kind of the role that I've been playing, um, and Skip can probably attest to when he was the chair that that's kind of the role you take on as the chair. You're basically a town manager. For no pay. For no, For no pay, pay. right. Um, and it takes a lot of time. Um, Another option is to go to a five member board. No, we can't. Uh, we can't we have a hard time getting three members. Could, so. Yeah, well, it's difficult to get two skip three. That was just going to be my comment. Have you considered going to a five person? The question would it. It's <laughs> we got to delegate two of them. I mean, we got to delegate some of these. To well, whom? That's the problem. Yeah. Um, We're all working. No, I, I get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And since the pandemic, I lost the work that I used to do, and, and I find that I'm, I, you know, I have a part time job that's um, taking up more time than I thought it would. Um, but so, yeah, it, it's hard sometimes to, to get, everything, get everything done. Um, well, I think you'll find um, when people decide who's going to run for what, if Paul doesn't run, mm -hmm. you know, there might be enough interest to go to a five-member board. Still, it requires a vote. Oh, that's the town. Yeah, and that would be a town we'll vote. That, and then yep. yeah. there'll be more people to do work, hopefully. Mm -hmm. yeah. I always thought it was a bad idea when everybody was meeting in that little office in the town hall to have a five-member board meeting in there. It would wouldn't fit. That, Mm -hmm. Now that you're I, I didn't experience that. That was before my time. Office, so. yeah. <laughs> well, I told some people here already that I'm willing to run for a seat. So. You need your head mm -hmm. examined first. <laughs> <laughs> you could stay home and hit yourself in the head with a hammer because sure. it feels really good when you stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I'll keep, you know, I'll keep doing the agenda and. Um, I'll basically kind of keep doing what I've been okay, doing. I'm going to take chair till town meeting day and okay. whatever right. that looks like and see right. what happens between now and then. Okay. Um. Since you're the new guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, and so would you like me to continue being... Yeah, why don't you finish up this meeting? With the, with the, yeah, oh, okay, and would you like me to continue putting together the agenda? Yeah, or? if you would, because again, I said I just... That's what my holdback is. I just don't have any more time. Okay. All right. Okay. So and I'll, I'll continue doing the, the minutes. For some um, reason, people decided that everybody has to have an emergency the last two weeks. We've been out 16 times in the last two weeks. It's continuous. It just doesn't stop. Yeah. And I do want to say that the minutes are much easier now now that uh, Tegan is our select board assistant and has been working on the minutes and is getting them down pretty good. So um, it's basically just filling in a name that she might not be familiar with. Um, okay, so um, 
The next item on the agenda, are there any, any questions at all about the, what we were just talking about with the select board and any other comments? Okay, so let's move on. Um, so we received a, a petition from uh, residents in town um, to, uh, for an Australian ballot um, for um, calling for a special town meeting for, uh, to decide um, as a town whether or not um, the election of town officers and the approval of town budgets will be done uh, through Australian ballot um, as opposed to town meeting is what I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, so, and uh, I did kind of pull out. We had um, 60 days to schedule a meeting. Right? Just look yeah, up. yeah, we had 60 days to schedule a meeting and then the, um, to warn a meeting, I, I guess is what we, and then um, the once the meeting is warned, it can't occur um, any less than 30 days from that warning. So you have 60 days to warn, then 30, 30 days, days to 30 have days, a meeting. Yeah, 30 days to 40 days yeah. to, to actually hold a meeting. Are the petition discussion. submitters okay with having it just voted the same day? Do we hold our town vote? That was my Does thought too. In that window? That this this could be a town window. meeting okay. um, thing. And, you know, I think we're kind of assuming that it's going to be Australian ballot. Pretty anyway. sure the legislature is going to change it to us. We can do Australian ballot this year, not mail in ballot. No, but Australian it's ballot. Just calls for a special meeting, so. Yeah. Well, that's what they want. That's what they well, want. That's what we're wondering if the town meeting could be the special meeting rather than doing two. No. No. It has to be a separate. Okay. And it is something that should be discussed. Yeah. Rather than just that check off thing, you know, the people. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe their last chance to discuss mm -hmm. anything. And actually, the 60 days starts from last Thursday. Yeah, last Thursday, from when the 23rd. Gave it, yeah. gave it to the town clerk. Yeah. So, um, any thoughts on when to schedule this? I mean, we're going to warn it. Yeah, we have to warn it. Yeah. So it would be 30, it would be, let's say, 30 days from when we warn it. So, um, Let's see, we've got... So 30 days would be the 17th of January. If, if, we, if we were to warn it today, yeah, it, would be, it would be basically well, towards the end of January. So if we warn it by Friday... But you have 60 days to warn it, so why don't you put it off until after town meeting? Because town meeting is more than 60, 60 days, 60 days out. Right, but you got the 60 days plus the 30 days. Uh-huh. If you warn I, it in the middle, put out the warning like... Well, middle of February, then you could have the meeting middle of March. Well, how far up do we have to warn? Is it 30 days or 30 days. two weeks? 30, 30 days. days. Okay. Yeah. I think was the I think the intention was to have this. Um, I mean, it, it seems pretty obvious they were going to be voting for these by Australian ballot anyway. Um, but this wouldn't take effect until next year. Correct. Anyway. Yes. Right. Yeah. Any thoughts? I'd like to warn it as soon as possible. Right. Uh huh. Okay. There's okay. a lot going on. It's true. For the clerk and treasurer, as far as the town report and maybe having to prepare ballots for an Australian ballot. And Speaking of the town report, please send in your reports. We have received. None from the email I sent out. So, thanks. <laughs> mm -hmm. We have the select board report and the. Yeah, let, let's not let's not digress <laughs> from the topic, please. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, well, if we were to have a warning at the end of this week, um, that would be, let's say, December thirty first is Friday. Friday. Is that right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, so 30 days would be January. Is there a 31st in January? It's a Monday the 31st. Monday the 31st. Yeah. Um, so it could be any time um, after that. Great. Early. Was so it going to be, be early, a day, early February. evening? Is it going to be a Saturday? <laughs> It should be a Saturday. I mean, I think we were talking earlier about trying to have the town meeting. Um, not be on a on a, week, on a, on a weekday. On a weekend day. Yeah. 
So what about warning it for Saturday, February 5th? Okay. You don't think an evening would be better? Well, I don't know. Well, that's the thing. Um, you know, Saturday is people's day off from work, um, but you know, some people, depending on when they work, if they work evenings, you know, that that's the Saturday. Usually, most people have the greatest opportunity to attend if they want to. Um, I would think, um, but I'm fine with. I'm fine with either. I don't. I don't care. care. Um, I, I, you know, I wouldn't advocate for. You know, we had in a few earlier meetings we were talking about trying to have a town meeting on a on a Saturday, on Saturday. When, it, when it wasn't a work day, because um, a lot of people have to work on town meeting day. Now, if the legislature goes ahead and authorizes us to go to Australian ballot town meeting for this, would we vote on it? by Australian ballot, Australian ballot, we could decide to do that. I yeah, know. well, that's that's part of it, yeah. Well, I don't think that would affect this petition. Right. Well, it could, because if no. we could decide, if the legislature let us, because we, it, we could choose to we hold all our meetings everything. instead of live, we could choose to have them. Right. <clears throat> so the warning... I mean, my preference with this is to actually vote Australian ballot to vote on this to Australian balloting only because it gives more to people, people to vote if they can't come to the meeting. Right. Yeah. I just we can't legally do it unless right. the legislature somebody says I'm yes. inclined to right. let it go a little bit just to see if the legislature gives us the authority to go Australian ballot. Does that make any sense at all? <laughs> True. What they did last year was they approved uh, using Australian ballots for the whole year. Correct, which is what I think they're gonna do again. Mm -hmm. So it's because yeah. it wouldn't affect this year's meeting. Mm -hmm. Nope. It'll be next year's. Meeting. Be next year's meeting. Yeah. And I know for town meeting, even if, if, if it is Australian ballot, chances are that we will hold an in-person discussion. In discussion. Informational. Yeah. Meeting. I just think voting the paper ballot way is the better way to. Mm -hmm. More. It would give more gauge, people right. a chance to to weigh in on it. Yep. So are you are you thinking if if the legislature does approve it? Are you inclined to? I'm inclined to hold it Australian as an Australian ballot. ballot. That would I be as well. Right, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so that gives Robin some, you know. Some You've got work to do. Advice to <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. That puts you out of overtime. <laughs> so, um, so technically, if we do that, then this special meeting. I mean, we can hold a special meeting, but this could be a topic for discussion at the town meeting, information meeting before the Australian ballot. It could be part of the discussion. Um, or we could hold an entirely separate meeting. Um, to me, it would be better to just have one, have one. Um, yeah. and, and make one. sure that this is on the, uh, the warning agenda. This so are you thinking that a pre-town meeting would, would be in person? Or a Zoom like last year. No, I think that in, was in, per, I think in person. In person, if we can. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know, if if we're doing Australian ballot uh, on town meeting day, um, then we, you know, we obviously probably don't need to have a town meeting on town meeting day. Um, so we could have a pre-town meeting informational meeting um, before the, uh, town meeting day when we would vote on Australian ballot. So you could maybe do that on a Saturday also. Yes. Yeah, Saturday we could do both. Before. I mean, we could. This could be part could of be the part of the morning or on that agenda. This can't be part of the town meeting. No, no. Okay. Well, like the pre-town meeting. Well, the the, the information. I'm not clear with. why we couldn't have it on town meeting. I just not clear why. It's a special meeting. The right. It just says we got to schedule a vote on this, right? The petitions to call for a special, a special, town. A special oh, town, right. town meeting. That's what the I mean, we could, says. when we have the pre-town meeting, we could call it the special meeting and have other things on the agenda besides this. I, I see what so. you're saying, and then we. I, I think it has to be standalone. Yeah. I, okay, I, I, all right. I believe yeah. that it has right. to. For Article One and Article Two. Okay. Yeah, okay. I think it actually has to be its own independent. Okay. Well, then, then we'll then we'll schedule this meeting and we'll we'll figure out the. Other town meeting, informational meeting, that's, separate from that. That's my understanding. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Can't you just do them an hour apart? We can do them on the same <laughs> yeah. day. Do them on the same day. Yeah, and but they have to be independent. Well, no, but if, you, if we end up going Australian ballot, it ain't gonna matter anyway. 
Right. But if you're going to have to meet, it's going to be hard to do because you're yeah, I mean, going to have a lot of discussion. Let's let's right. schedule yeah. a special meeting, right. whether it's live or Australian ballot, for the Saturday, the 12th of February. That gives us a couple weeks from when the legislature may do their thing. All right. You're going to what? Time frame? Or do we want to get into February 12th at 10 a.m. would be the. Yep. Special, special select board meeting, or special town meeting special to hold on this petition. Where would that be held? In the school gym. Small. Hopefully. Let me know and I can post that on the uh, website. Okay. Well, let's figure it out first. Yeah. We have to find out whether we can use that space. So can you get yeah. the warning out on that, Robin, by Friday? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll contact the principal. And we may, in fact, you, switch it to an Australian principal. ballot oh, vote if the legislature that gives us the authority to do that. But not for that subject. We could for this subject too. There's no reason we couldn't. I don't, I don't, I don't. But that's not what they're asking for. Yeah. Right? They're asking for a meeting. Right. Correct. For a vote. I mean let's see what you say. I see what you're saying, Paul. Right, right. If they give us the authority we could do that. Right, we could, couldn't we? Yeah. So we'll see what happens. It's no different than no different than our regular meeting. Our regular meeting is a regular meeting. 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 We'll have to prepare a ballot. We'll have to have ballot clerks and do all that. If we do, well, I will, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. We'll see what happens. Okay. Does that work? Start. Okay. Any other comments? Any questions about? About the special town meeting, anyone? Okay, um, so just updates and follow ups. Um, first of all, is it, um, so the town energy audit looks like you have a contractor in mind? He's not able to come until next week. Okay, all right. So I've given him the whole our town hours at the office. Um, and yeah, I'm expecting him to write back tomorrow. Okay, he's the person that did my house, so. Oh, is he? He's, he did a good job by us, so. Um, and then I just want to have the ARPA committee um, down yeah, he, here. I don't know if there's any uh, anything yeah, from the that? last meeting, but there is a special meeting, informational meeting. That's the reason I wanted to have this on here. Um, it's going to be held Tuesday, January 4th, 6 p.m. in the school gym. There will be uh, a representative from the VLCT and from Champlain or Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission that will be there also. And uh, it's basically uh, an informational meeting for the um, that's hosted by the ARPA committee um, for town residents to uh, suggest have any ideas, maybe hear the ideas that um, the committee has uh, had submitted to it already or that they have on their own. Um, it's it's basically um, you know for the town and for residents in town to uh, get involved in the process of um, um, suggesting. Um, Quick question, Michael. Yes. Is there a form or anything to fill out for these suggestions? Uh, let's ask. Uh, Justin's a member of the committee. Yeah, you, do you have a, a form? Um, is that been put out? No. Do you? There was changes, and then I left it to the board to decide. Okay. To make those changes. Okay, so that hasn't happened. Sort of yeah. Nothing I've seen. No. Do you want me to post that? Yeah, definitely. I will uh, reach out to them tonight. Find out who's got it. Okay. Is this meeting on the fourth for people to actually bring their suggestions or to find out what kind of suggestions? It's just an informational meeting. Yeah. Okay. So what's going to happen? From my understanding, is you're going to have a form that you fill out and attach your budget and your request to it and submit to the committee. But not on the fourth. Not well. You, you can, can give it. You, you, you can if you want to, but it's not to be. Dis that's not what they're discussing at this okay. meeting. They're not discussing individual. The committees it's more are to doing inform that. Form individuals what the money is for. Correct. Because so mm -hmm. again, when when you submit, you need to attach to it where in the guidance you feel you fit. Right. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I know from you guys, when it comes to us, that's what we're going to be looking for. Is because we have to make sure it's not gray. It's mm -hmm. got to be black and white. Right. There's mm -hmm. supposed to be a state representative there. Yeah. Question. Quick questions. Because okay. I can pretty much assure you that gray requests won't get funded by me. Because <laughs> I just, we don't want to pay this money back. It's going to have to be clear. It's going to be black and white. If it's, if, it's not, if it's not really straightforward, 
we're going to be responsible for it. Right. So we got to make sure that the requests are from the town proper. And we just so, don't want to pay the money back. Yeah, your your tax dollars are going to come back at you in a different well, way. When will the applications be due? If, That's up to if these guys. Decided? Yeah. Who's the chair? There's Heather's a due the chair. date on them on March first. March first. Okay. Yeah. So the process, they're going to bring the requests that they've collated down to what their recommendation to us, and then the board has to approve them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Friday yet? <laughs> Does uh, anyone from the ARPA committee have anything more to, to say about the committee or the meetings? Or I haven't this, misrepresented this it in any way, out? have I? No, I have not. <laughs> okay. No, it's, it's uh, we are, uh, the, the committee has a lot of questions before, you know. Mm -hmm. As we did, because you start yeah. reading that and stuff that, and it's like, whoa. On the 4th, there's going to be a lot of questions we're going to get answered just like everybody else. Okay, great. We, we're on the same note that everybody else is. Yeah. We don't want to spend money that we have to pay yeah, yeah, we have forty grand yeah. now because we spent it in the wrong place. Yeah, and then we get another check next year yeah. for the same amount. Okay. Because we're just this. we could have just taken this and the select board done it, but there needed to be some public input, yeah. and that's just what in this meeting is all about. Yeah. 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 That's, what, that's what this informational meeting is about yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, it's slow rolling, but I think once they'll get there. Right. Yeah. And you know, VLCT and the Regional Planning Commission, they're available for yeah, yeah, yeah. assistance anytime, not yeah. not just at yeah. this meeting. Yeah. So. yeah. So what time does that meeting start on before? So 6, 6 p.m. Yeah. I believe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing, mask required. Yeah. So yeah, it's in the it's in the school. It's in the school. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Is there gonna be a Zoom meeting? Uh I don't think so. I don't really know how we can set that up. Chuck says his front porch is available for the meeting. I'm game. <laughs> I'll drive. Did you ask David again? Yeah. I'll drive. I'll drive. So I don't <laughs> see why, if it's just for listening, for people to listen in. Why can't we set up a Zoom in the school? We have Wi Fi. Uh huh. Yeah, so we know how to do it. I don't think it would be a big deal if we have a screen yeah. and we have a projector. Mm -hmm. we, we for everybody to, to listen to, yeah. so, for yeah. the public, so we can do it. Because then really everybody good. can be equally confused. Chuck, are you going to try to get on that? Yeah, if it's going to be a Zoom meeting, I'd like to. Ah, oh, forget it then. Let's not do it. <laughs> <laughs> we said no. <laughs> I mean, we could ask. We could ask HCTV to back when we were not meeting in person. They basically organized our Zoom select board meetings, um, and I don't know if they would be able to, to. You know, we haven't asked it if they'd be able to record that meeting, um, but they they might also be willing to set it up as a Zoom meeting. Um, and then somebody's got to. It's much more complicated for them to do that. It's a pretty complicated process. Um, so I don't know if it's possible or not. I mean, we could somebody could bring a laptop. We do have a town a Zoom account um, so that people could hear. I think we'd have to try to figure out a way to make sure that they could hear in the gym. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's a big technical mm -hmm. thing. Um, well, it's worth a try. We got a little bit of time. Okay. So. Yeah. Where I can hear it, I would. Okay, yeah. And it's coming right up, so we've got to figure this out if we're going to... I'll look into it. Oh, wait. I'll look into it. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm good. It's, it's, yeah. You probably are the most tech-savvy of the three of us here at the table, so... I'll um, just break it, so... Yeah. Before you move on, the subject of town meeting, I just want to remind you that you have, like, one more meeting before the town report is due. Mm -hmm. That's like not till January 10th. And assuming that, I mean, expecting that the legislature might do the same as they did last year, they did not require that people who want to be on the ballot need to get a petition, but you still have to submit a consent form to be put on the ballot. Mm -hmm. So, um, Robin has some of those forms. If anybody here is so going to any apply, uh, and anybody who read, hears this on HCTV, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, we might have one or two select board slots, and 
all kinds of auditor slots and yeah, we probably should get a sense of what would need to be, you know, what openings there are and what would need to be on a, a ballot. Right. Well, we need, yeah. That's uh, part of what's going into the town report is the list of, okay. of open positions. Of open positions. And the list of right. appointed okay. positions. And so I assume that the so town clerk and town treasurer are working on that part yeah, of it? Yeah, Robin's okay. going to uh, contact Prepare people a list who of available are, slots. She's going to actually contact people who might be running. Okay. For example, the lister who's up for re-election, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and let them know that if they are going to run, they need to come in and sign that consent form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we should just start doing all the steps that we did last year because I think it's yeah. inevitable that mm -hmm. that that's what's going to be. Except for the mailing, to everybody. No right. mail-in ballots. Right. Do no. a, a, a postcard to everybody and. They can either um, call for an or come in and get an absentee ballot, or call and have an absentee ballot. Whatever the absentee ballot, ballot down, process is, or show up on the date and or file in a you know vote in a voting booth, and right. you'll have to pay to get the get the uh, tabulator, the thing programmed. Mm -hmm. That's probably five hundred dollars at least. Perfect. Maybe the legislature will come up with some money to help <laughs> towns pay for that too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, thanks for bringing that up, Diana. Um, so, um, some of you people may be wondering why the FEMA grant for the old store project is on our agenda um, tonight. Um, and I will let Diana explain why it's there. Yeah, well, the people in Boston or wherever um, have finally decided to check into the. They never did close out the grant. Of course they did. <laughs> <laughs> why is that? They've never been that audited. Not? But, you know, now they've looked at it. And they did find one Have thing. You filed that was your subrecipient odd. report. <laughs> oh, whoops! Whoops! <laughs> they did find that in the deed transferring the property to the town, there's reference to a wastewater permit that was issued in um, uh, 2003 when Kirk and Cam were thinking about opening the store. They got a wastewater permit for a septic system that was never installed. But that worried FEMA because they thought somebody might show up and say, well, there's this septic system permit we can put in a, you know, I don't know how that could happen because we've also got lots of restrictions from the FEMA grant about what we can and can't do on that property, which basically nothing. So I figured to clear that up, I called the, the ANR and found that they have a form, Request for Voluntary Permit Revocation. So it says here, name, landowner, name, permit number, project description, replace a failed septic system, serving the Woodbury store, issued to prior owners in 2003. We, the undersigned voluntarily requests the permit number WW52353 be revoked, um, and then a series of questions. I own the land, we own the land, there was no construction. I no longer wish to proceed with the project. I understand that if the permit is revoked, we cannot subdivide or develop the property. I waive the right to a hearing on this request and ask that the permit be revoked without a hearing. Mm -hmm. So there's that for you guys to sign. If you Thank you. Any, any more questions? Okay. I, I hope that'll just clear it up because. Mm -hmm. Really, it's a non-issue, and I've sent them all the paperwork to to show that. Okay, so how do how do we feel about? Move, we sign the letter. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So move, get okay. it done. All right. So sign away. Um, that was easy. Uh, and then um, the last thing on the um, other business is the cranberry meadow wetland. Yeah, well that's, I just wanted to update you that that is still inching along. All the people involved have died. Oh and my. <laughs> Attorney Charles Martin from the, uh, from the law firm in Barry has the, uh, is the executor for the state estates that are involved. Mm -hmm. um, our funder has rescinded her offer because mm -hmm. of personal issues. The Vermont Housing and Conservation Board is very interested in funding the project. I mean, it's ten thousand dollars. So the board um, signed a purchase and sale agreement like two years ago, 
and the lady who's the last remaining live person on the deed uh, before she died, you know, like a year or more ago, had signed the purchase and sale agreement too. So that's still valid. Um, the HCB does not require a survey, but they do require um, an appraisal. So I've contacted a couple of appraisers to get an estimate of um, what that might cost. And they pay for, they will pay the cost of the appraisal, but it's a reimbursement thing. Can't be more than $2,500. Um, and then when it, after they've approved that and approved the grant, they, the town doesn't have to put any money towards that. VHCB will, you know, write the check for the closing. So it doesn't have to go through the town. Mm -hmm. So anyways, that's just what's going on with that. Mm -hmm. It will still be a little while, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The yeah. first, yeah. He had to open an estate for one of the people on the, uh, on the deed. And finally got that approved. And then Mark Milner died. So now he has to do an estate for her. Fortunately, Mildred's has another daughter who lives in Williamstown and she's the administrator for that estate. So mm -hmm. anyways, okay. it takes a, took him like nine months to get the approval for the first estate. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will so take that before yeah, it gets also taken <laughs> <long. Yes. laughs> So um, I'm just noticing this piece of paper on our table um, at our last meeting, the budget special meet, uh, select board meeting that we had uh, working on the budget, uh, that was last week, I guess. Last week. Yeah. Yep. Um, last Monday. We had talked about a 3% um, pay scale raise across the board for um, any of the town elected officials, town employees. And that was, you know, part of our budget. Um, it looks like we should approve this. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we should sign it. Yeah. So. So uh, move. So move. Okay. Now with a second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Okay. okay. So does that mean you have to redo your budget then? No. No. It's in there. It's, right. it's kind of factored in, but this is just a formal. We just step. didn't have the chart. Formal step that I overlooked when we were talking about the budgets. And Not that's pretty, anybody have any other business that they would like to bring before the select board before we adjourn? Thank you, guys. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't hear any, so do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.